I think that um, math and physics is is a very great example of playing the long game, right? Like, why do people get into it? You make very little money, um, you know, and uh, let's say you graduate, and I, I experienced this, right? I graduated Stanford with a math major uh, in pure math. Um, you're not, I, I wasn't very employable at the time, right? Because everyone wanted to know, do you code? And as a math major, you do a little bit of coding, but I'm not a computer science major, right? Um, so then obviously the path is uh, math grad school, where a lot of the top programs just don't have high budgets. You, you have I think Harvard has like room for eight math PhD students every year, for example. And it just gets more and more selective and selective and the stakes, you know, and the competition gets harder and harder the the more you ascend. And then may, maybe eventually you get tenured um, when you're, you know, in your 30s or 40s. Um, and the payoff is creating something that sort of adds to the body of work of society, right? To the general sort of like body of knowledge. And maybe if you're lucky enough, they teach it in schools and people will learn learn your theories and, and your your work. Um, so it's, it's very much a long game. And I think that type of long-term thinking of just doing the right thing and tolerating some, some short-term pain and struggle and being misunderstood, that's probably the most salient lesson from, from math. Um, because, you know, there's people that studied computer science and hum bio and, you know, they would go off to med school and others would go and get a job at Google when I was there. And that, that's sort of very, very direct. Um, but uh, I think Beju and I both were not interested in that. And we just really wanted to prioritize doing something that made an impact on society. And it took a different form, uh, but both math and entrepreneurship kind of have that at its, as its kernel.